Today, we're going to push things a bit. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Confidence is not about taking risks. It's about knowing your limitations and where the real risks lie. Oh my god. I got freaking the vid. I'm sailing and you're not coming with us. I know. I have like a horrible, horrible headache. Didn't sleep much. Not 100%. And I'm sorry to miss it. I need to be 100% to go out there today. Yeah, so Hanks. <laughs> we say Hanks. Hanks. As the click. Okay, Hanks. It's been, this part is the most stressful. for yeah. <laughs> Mark, what's your last name? Mark Malari. Malari? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? From, um, from Montpellier. Really? Yeah. No way. Local yeah. guy. Yeah. I'm born in Palavas. I, I um, learned how to sail in Carnon. I work on La Grande Motte and I live in Egmont. So yeah. I'm from here. And you do the handover training? Yeah. Uh, is there the same uh, thing to learn? The same? Yeah, it's always the same thing. They all know how to sail, but we, our mission is to teach them how to use an outremer, how to take a reef, how to to the, the angle, which which sail at what angle, with what wind, when can I, when they have to take a reef or not, all that thing. It's a outremer thing. Yeah. So the outremer is more sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, it's sensitive, but uh, it's uh, easy to use. It's fast and safe, but easy. I really need to soak this up. So we've got a couple journalists and a couple photographers on board, as well as two pro sailors. And Robin here is on the drone, and he knows what he's doing. Sometimes when it's uh, the boat is too fast, I don't. Uh, you can't catch up. You can't start. You know the engine doesn't. Yeah, I have this problem. Too. And maybe I turn off all the sensors. First. Oh, you turn off all the sensors. Yeah. Oh, otherwise important. you can't catch it back. You know with the mast and everything. Go a bit more downwind, so it's uh, a bit more safe. But to send it, it's okay. It's more to catch it back. I'm getting more nervous. Nice with the full main sail and oh, it's beautiful. You tell me when you return, okay? Okay. Really, a great day to see what this boat can do. We've got sustained winds in the high 20s, gusting in the high 30s. Winds are blowing offshore, so we've got 1 to 1.5 meter seas. Pretty nice. Sailors love this. For passengers, uh, not necessarily. Horrible conditions. I'm all wet. It's terrible. Full mainsail and full Genoa are definitely the upper limits for this wind speed. But on a performance boat that can easily sail into the mid and even high teens, it's the apparent wind that matters. And our apparent wind speed right here is 23 knots, right at the limit. But I really wanted to see what happens when we get overpowered. In a couple seconds, the wind is going to move forward right to the beam 
and gas to 34 knots. It was very predictable. She rounded up into the wind a little bit, and then as the gust eased, she went back to course. This is really nice to see, because a beam reach is actually one of the more dangerous points of sail in high winds on a catamaran. The better option in a gust, especially on a performance catamaran, is to bear away, as you'll see me doing right here. We take some of the wind out of the sails as the boat accelerates. And as soon as we turned off the wind, the ride got extremely smooth. Very, very comfortable. And this is pretty wild. As Robin brought the drone back in, he both flew it and caught it. He's a one-man band. Knowing we'd have to climb back to Windward to get home, we thought we'd be nice to the passengers and reef down. I was feeling pretty comfortable with the boat overall, but little things were catching me up, like the clutches that have a lock on them. It's a seemingly little thing, but it could be a disaster if I couldn't release a rope when I needed to. Same operations as on our last boat, a little help from the electric winches. As we raise that stay sail, there are those clutches again. I'm having a little trouble releasing the Genoa sheet and it's catching on the staysail. It's a simple case of operator error, but this is why you need time to get to know a boat. Reefing the mainsail went off without a hitch but I would like to do it a bit faster. That minimizes the time we're beamed to the seas and getting wet. Before we head upwind, I wanna point out two things you gotta keep in mind. First of all, today we are pushing the limits on this boat. And secondly, I've got two professional sailors aboard ready to dump the sheets if things get out of hand. Remember, now that we're going upwind, we've got to add our boat speed to the true wind, and it is strong. Sailing like this with crew for a few hours is thrilling. But in cruising mode, you would avoid this situation as much as you could. It's exhausting. And with the relative wind coming across the deck at over 40 knots, working on deck gets to be a real challenge. but it gives me a lot of confidence to know that the boat can handle it and to know what I need to do to make her ready. Do we have the skills to take this boat across the Atlantic by ourselves? No way, at least not yet. And that's all right. I really love learning, especially from the professionals. I'm glad my wife didn't come. Well, she was sick. Poor girl. Wow. 
man, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just feel so achy in my head, a little swollen in my glands. Not like a strong sore throat, but just really fatigued and uh, kind of in pain. So Mark was our skipper today, and uh, after sailing with us today, are you feeling comfortable to go with us to Canaries? Yeah, very comfortable. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of wind today. Yeah, we had the big gust at 35, 38. But you see, the, bell, the boat went uh, well, yeah. easy and safe. So it goes fast. Yeah. What was our top speed? Top speed, 18.3. Uh, Not bad. Not, Not bad. Not so bad. Oh, yeah. That, that'll get us there in a hurry. <laughs> Uh, what are some things that I must be more careful with in the big wind? We just, you just need to feel uh, the power in the, in the mass, in the sail. When we were downwind, we, we try to be fast. And then when there is a big gust, we need to bear away to uh, decrease the apparent wind speed. And that's it. Yeah, decrease the pressure on the sails. And the boat accelerates very fast. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, turning upwind, um, of course, kind of wet. <laughs> a Exciting. Bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, um, but we only take one reef mm -hmm. in winds sustained maybe 27, 28, but gust to 37. Yeah. Uh, do you think we should maybe take two reefs? Yes, we should, but uh, I knew it was just a big gust. From my point of view, it's, it's just a big gust. Release a, open your main a little bit, wait. If you take a, the reef in the big gust, the sail will flap a lot, it's not good. You can, I, I prefer to avoid the damage. Yeah. And wait a little bit. Yeah. We were close, we were in the bay, so yeah. that's, that's it. But if we have the sea room and we think the wind is coming, squall, yeah. oh, so yes, something we, of, we of just we bring of course. it up. Yeah, yes, of course. Um, we, today we reef up into the wind. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's difficult to reef this boat, reef the mainsail off the wind? Uh, until 90, 100 degrees through wind angle, it's okay. More, it starts to be difficult. It depends on your speed. If you are fast, your apparent, apparent wind speed comes from the bow, so it's easy to reef. If you are slow, the apparent wind speed comes from the back or beam. It's more difficult. Yeah. Uh, can we reef at uh, 170? Center the traveler and uh, it's, it's difficult. It's very it's difficult. difficult. Still yeah. too much pressure yeah. and uh, the square top. The square top grabbed the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you see me sail today. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see any things that you think uh, I must be more careful? No, no. Okay. You, you need to know the boat. Yeah. But you need more experience with this boat. Yeah. But I'm confident. Uh, Sometimes I saw some mistake. I did nothing, and you did it well. So. I'm really confident for you. I see the mistake and I change. Exactly. Okay. By yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for today. It was fantastic. It was beautiful out there. Yeah. yeah. The boat was magnifique. Now, well, first things first, how are you doing? I'm feeling better. It's, uh, I still feel really clogged up in my ears. Oh, like man. this COVID thing is deep inside. It's like we, we made it, what, three and a half years? Yeah. Didn't get it. <laughs> and you got nabbed. I don't know how, but I tested negative. I mean. Strong like ox. Strong. <laughs> don't even say that. 
So you saw the video, what'd you think? Oh, wow, <laughs> I feel like I could feel the spray. It was quite a day. <laughs> yeah, I really have to emphasize that we were out there to really push things and see what the boat could do. A couple of our passengers, <laughs> Not particularly happy to be on board. I know, I felt so bad for him. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't come. I really contemplated coming and looking back on how things have unfolded, like I was even crazy to consider that, yeah. to power through that. She had not tested before. No. Yeah. It had just hit me in the middle of the night that night and it was, um, I couldn't even, I, I went and slept in the car for three hours. Oh, man. <laughs> like how could I have been out there on that ocean? So we've got a huge challenge in front of us. Uh, one of the reasons that we have the opportunity to sail this boat is because Outremer has the opportunity to show the boat in Miami in mid-February, <laughs> which looking at the calendar starts to make us go, hmm, a lot to do. Yes, and this week is Christmas week and they are completely closed. So it shortens our time even more. Most people who prepare for an Atlantic crossing have their boat, get to know their boat for between two and six months. We've now sailed the boat. Well, I've sailed it twice. You <laughs> sailed it once. Yes. And we really only have about a week and a half to get the boat prepped to do this crossing if we want to make the date in Florida. So we're a little bit, uh, hmm. Yeah. Hmm, yes. Is and that so wise to just take off? And the question that a lot of people have had is, are you guys going to take crew? What's the story? Do you think you're ready for this? And the answer is we absolutely could sail this boat by ourselves given a couple of months Yeah. to get to know it and to pick really nice weather windows. So given the audacious goal of uh, Miami in February, February 14th, we are gonna take a couple of really experienced professional crew. Absolutely. Um, I started the video by saying that to have confidence, you really have to know your limitations. And we have enough experience in this sailing game to know that it would be, well, it'd just be stupid to take off and push this boat the way we would need to push it to make it to Miami. So absolutely, positively, taking not just competent crew, but professional skippers that will continue to show us the ropes, so to speak, and hopefully help us push the boat a little faster. So aside from the crew question, we still have a lot of preparations to make in that short period of time. Right, there's still a few modifications and installations that we need to make, well, Uchermer needs to make on the boat. We're gonna get a couple more sails, we're gonna install a little bit more electronics, and yeah there's a list of like 48 things <laughs> and that doesn't even include the provisioning yes yeah we could yes. be at sea for between three and maybe four weeks to yes. get the boat all the way there so with a minimum of three people most likely four the whole way yeah so yeah we got a lot of provisioning to to start doing and luckily we can do more in the canaries so uh, you have been slowly getting your energy back. You ready to go shopping? I am. Let's do it. <sighs> we gotta, I think it's going to take about 10 trips. So. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for all the very, very kind, supportive notes that you've left in the comments section on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's been fascinating to see everybody show up on Instagram. I know. I'm That's trying to so be more fun. active with that. You're great with Instagram. <laughs> yeah. It's a cool way to stay kind of in real time mm -hmm. or closer to real time. Although these are pretty real. Time. This is pretty much real time. Yeah as well. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for all of your support. It really makes uh, a big difference to us. And as we do every week, we just want to give an extra big shout out to the patrons. Yes. Thank you guys. And we're wishing everybody a very safe and happy new year. Happy new year, everybody. 24 is going to be epic. Yeah.